One of two Boeing purpose-built jets for the U.S. Air Force T-7A taxis into position. The future of U.S. Air Force advanced pilot training is aloft. This is going to be good. Hey BJ Clean Team, it's Ryan. Welcome back to my channel. This channel is all things aviation. If you haven't been here before, I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and current commercial pilot who's flown both Boeing and Airbus aircraft. I use my experience to break down epic aviation videos and stories. And you can send those to me on the at B Jet Clean Instagram and stay to the very end of this video because I'm gonna be breaking down the T7A Red Hawk, the replacement for the T38. This is just a sweet little flyable jet that by the end of this video, you're gonna have a great understanding of the capabilities of what this thing can do. And I'll be comparing my experience in the T38 to this new T7 Red Hawk. Before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button and hey, maybe even subscribe. Every time you double click that like button, you create a little mini sonic boom somewhere in the world. And that's a beautiful thing. Just turn it blue, it feels good. And speaking of blue, we've got these blue tubes here on Be Jet Clean. This is at bjetclean.com. This is a company I created with a fellow fighter pilot. We make shave and shower products and t-shirts. And overall, you're gonna buy these products anyway. So you might as well buy them from fighter pilots and you might as well get products that were conceived at 30,000 feet and supersonic speeds. I mean, the other guy's products were made in a boring boardroom. <laughs> Who wants that in their house? Nobody does. So Be Jet Clean, we support veteran foundations and we put a little QR code on the back and that QR code will link you to our website where you can check out Fighter Pilot Call Sign, the lore and history of fighter pilots. We're just really excited to have you a part of the Be Jet Clean team. So whether you choose to buy these or not, no big deal, it doesn't matter. Either way, I'm really excited to have you here on this channel. And now let's dive in to the T7A Red Hawk. Here we go. Digitally designed and now leaning into the second phase of flight. All right, so right there, this is one of the best features of the T7A. And let's say I went back to be an instructor, any type of fighter jet instruction, having a view of what's going on around you is massively important. But in the T38, they called it the cave because when you're in the back seat of that thing, you can't really see anything. And honestly, if you try to land that thing from the back seat, it's essentially an emergency procedure. You would never really do it unless you were in an emergency situation. You have to get certified to do it, but at the end of the day, it's just a really weird sensation because you can't really see forward. You can only see out the side. So the whole time you're landing it and coming in to land, you're looking out the side. So the stadium seating in the T7A is a huge advantage for the instructor. It's honestly an advantage for the student as well because the instructor is going to be more comfortable up there and they're going to let the student maybe make some mistakes they wouldn't have been able to make otherwise, but the instructor is going to feel confident that they can see what's going on. They have essentially like a God's eye view up there in that stadium seat so they can prevent anything from going too far and being a bad situation. Really excited that they put this in the T7A and I'm sure instructors around the world are rejoicing. Testing one of two Boeing purpose-built jets for the U.S. Air Force T7A Red Hawk Advanced Trainer Program taxis into position. All right, we're ready for takeoff. And Chief Test Pilot Steve Schmidt pushes the throttle forward. Nozzle's good. Here's coming up. So the single engine platform that is the T7A is an advantage, in my opinion, over the T38. And I'll tell you why. T38 had two engines, so maintenance costs are gonna be higher. This has a high performance single engine layout and it's got an advanced ejection seat. Now, they've made the ejection seats in the T38 more advanced, but they started out you know, terrible where you had to carry your own parachute on your back. But eventually they, they had to replace the ejection seats in the T38 they were terrible. But the combo of having a really user-friendly, very maintenance-friendly engine and a great ejection seat to me are gonna save costs over time, save maintenance costs over time. And I would be completely comfortable flying this single engine jet. I'm not I'm not breaking up with the F-15E. I'm not breaking up with the dual engine configuration. Don't worry, F-15E. 
we're still together. But at the end of the day, I think the maintenance savings that come from a single engine platform and having flown the F-16, I'm all on board for the single engine. And I think even the F-35 having that single engine, the single engines nowadays, they're so advanced that guys, what they do is they can literally transmit and send fault codes to maintenance so that when you land, maintenance has those codes and they know what they're going to need to do. And it kind of prevents any type of catastrophic engine failure. So much more reliable than potentially a single engine platform would have been back in the day. The future of U.S. Air Force advanced pilot training is aloft. Our command grid pass three is checking in, passing two for 5,000 VFR. I'm Paul Neewald. I'm the vice president and program manager for the T-7 program here at Boeing. I feel like he needs to be more excited. It's like, come on, dude. You're making like the most advanced fighter trainer in the world. Like, can we get like Maverick to do this? Can we... <laughs> Can we like hire Tom Cruise to be the dude who's like the uh, the training lead on this? Or, you know, I'll do it. The spot's open. Come on. Let's just get some excitement behind this thing. This is a really sweet aircraft. Personally, I would love to take it for a test flight. So Boeing, if you need somebody to step in and just spread the word, get some great marketing going for the T-7A, I know somebody. Hey, friend. Thanks so much for checking out this video. It really means a lot to me. And while you're here, I wanna give you a quick shout about Be Jet Clean. It's a company I made with a fellow fighter pilot. It's a shave and shower company. We make things like hair and body wash, shave butter, conditioner, things that you're gonna buy anyway. So why not buy it from fighter pilots? Why not buy it from a company that was conceived at 30,000 feet and supersonic speeds instead of some boring boardroom where some people sat around and devised ways to take your money? Now, there's intention behind this product and we're proud of that. That's why we give back to veterans and first responder foundations with every purchase. I'm so glad you're here and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. If you want to check out BJet Clean, go to bjetclean.com. Flight control check. This is an exciting day. This is where we go demonstrate high angle of attack maneuverability as well as departure resistance. Yep. Key element. So high angle of attack maneuvering is the regime that you would enter into if you were in a dogfight. And it's just a fancy way of saying your nose is gonna be up really high and they don't want it to get into a position where it's gonna stall and not be able to be recovered. Departing is departing controlled flight. And that essentially means that airflow stops flowing over the wings and your jet stalls. So you gotta be able to recover from that. And ideally you would have a flight control system that you know pretty much recovers the jet for you and you just you know push down a little bit, add some power, and then you fly right out of any type of stall. That's what you want in a fighter jet because you will definitely be operating this thing at high angles of attack. That's the high AOA. Any type of dogfight training or anything like that, you're gonna enter those regimes. So this is a fun, fun testing sequence and uh, this is a lucky test pilot. That's all I'll say. And okay. demonstrating the fighter-like performance of the agile jet. It went from model-based engineering and design on a laptop to first flight in just 36 months. Digital. So model-based engineering on a laptop to first flight in 36 months, that is epic. And I think it shows the strength of the digital engineering age. And the T7 is that new digital jet. So the way that this thing is produced, I hope that we kind of take some notes from that and maybe some some notes from Elon Musk. I don't know. People that think differently, we need to take that into the next generation of fighters that we build. So into that sixth generation fighter, it's got to be a digital fighter where essentially all the different things that might disrupt its production or make it not capable early on are completely pounded out and stomped out prior to production. And that's what they did at the T7. So well played. Digital engineering has really been a game changer to this program. We're actually flying at the same time we're building the new jets. In fact, it's because of the T-7A's digital DNA that an anomaly at higher angles of attack called wing rock was discovered long before the first U.S. Air Force pilots ever climb into the cockpit. It allowed us to identify issues early, get those fixes in. We probably wouldn't have discovered something like this until two years from now. Those fixes were loaded into the jet's updated operational flight software and are being validated today. Backgrid 53, climb maintain front of 350. My name is Brad Nelson. I am the senior test program manager for the T7A program. Wind up turn, targeting 5Gs. We've been able to move through our testing much quicker than we have on previous airplanes because of that digital engineering. Even so, the COVID-19 pandemic has challenged the program and its global supply chain. The what? The what? I, 
I haven't heard of that before. Uh, the moped, moped pandemic. We're seeing the impacts of the pandemic in, in our build and it's, it's delayed parts coming to us and thereby delaying us uh, putting the aircraft together. Neewalt says that the team is committed to making up any delay in schedule by using the same innovative mindset that's fueled the T-7A Red Hawk program since its start. And no one knows that better than the pilots who are flying the advanced trainer into its second phase of testing. Uh, it flew squawk free, so we were extremely happy with the way the jet performed. It's what I love about When he says squawk free, that's the code you come back in with and you squawk your code to maintenance. So it could be code one, which means, hey, good to go. This thing doesn't need any maintenance. Code two means it's good, it's flyable, but we need some things looked at prior to the next flight. And then code three means something's hard broke and really needs to be looked at. So that's what he's talking about with the squawks there. What I love about this team, they don't take anything as an excuse, but as a challenge to make sure that we can deliver this system to our Air Force customer to give them the best training system ever. So I'll highlight that, the way that the canopy opens to the side. I think it's just a nice feature in my opinion. It gives you a ton of room to get into the cockpit and especially getting into the back seat of this for the instructors. If you have the typical clamshell canopy that opens up towards the front, you gotta like squeeze in between the canopy and the side rail. And I saw a lot of weapon systems operators having to do this in the F-15E and it's just kind of a pain. So I would say great design design element there, again, making it user-friendly, always a plus. Contact Kansas Center, 128.35. So there you go, there's that hype video on the T7A. Some things that I'll highlight that from an aviator's perspective and from an improvement from the T38 to the T7A, first of all is just the wings and the overall flyability. I mean, like they said, they digitally designed this thing to be very aeronautically stable. And when you're a new pilot learning how to fly, you can put yourself into some very weird positions. And so with the T38, the aerodynamics of it weren't great. So especially when you were at slow speed coming into the traffic pattern, there were points during that time where if an engine failed and you had to eject, you would not be able to survive. I mean, that's just crazy that we would put ourselves in that position. So the advancements on the aeronautics and the ability for this thing to maintain stable flight and have a great ejection seat, huge pluses. It also integrates really well with the data link and being able to talk to different aircraft. And that's done in a simulated type way in the T7 where you can actually see radar threats coming down your radar without something actually being out there while you're flying. So then we can... That way you can operate your radar while feeling G-forces and doing different maneuvers that you would do in follow-on aircraft to avoid threats. It also integrates with smart weapon capability, so it gives you the tactile and the feel and the function of typing in different things into smart weapons. And then additionally, it has a link to a threat warning system. So it gives you a basically a rudimentary experience of using a threat warning system and what that's going to mean when you're in an actual fighter jet. I remember going from the T-30 which didn't have anything like that to the F-15E and just it's like you're doing it from a fire hose your mind is blown because it's essentially like interpreting another radar display so to be able to see that early on in the T-7 is huge. So what's the real reason why we need the T-7A Red? Well we need a fighter jet trainer that looks really cool that's the main reason. <laughs> no I'm just kidding so you need something to bridge the gap between what the T-38 offered and then going from the T-38 to the F-35 it just didn't make sense like that's too big of a bridge to be able to, to grasp in a quick manner. And we need pilots to be able to train, be trained relatively quickly to go from their initial trainer right into like the F-35 or the F-22 or even the new advanced F-15EX. And what this does is it bridges the gap and it gives pilots more of an ability to, to make that transition and to square that corner, as I like to say, than they might have been able to do in the T-38. Just because of all the glass screens and the different integrations in the T-7A drastically resemble the F-35. And the last thing I'll say the big plus for me on looking at the T7A cockpit is the side stick. I loved going from the F15E, which again, F15E, I love you, but the stick in the middle, it blocks some of your screens and you have to lean over and look. And then additionally, you don't get as precise of movement with the stick as you can get with a side stick. That was my experience. And ultimately having the side stick there allows you an unencumbered view of those glass displays. And that's where all the magic happens. It's on those displays. So you want to make sure that you have 
have a clear view of all those and the side stick definitely allows for that. Now I've heard they have allowed some more movement in the stick than what you would get in the F16. The problem with the F16 stick is it was just not intuitive as to how many G's or how much pressure you were putting back on the stick because it didn't really move at all. So I've heard that the T7A stick moves a little bit more and having it on the side there to me is just super Gucci. Thanks so much for checking out the T7A with me guys. If you like this video, please go ahead, like and subscribe and create that little mini sonic boom. It would mean a lot to me and help me grow this channel. And most of all, I hope you have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.